A projectile example. A cannonball is shot horizontally off the edge of a 20-meter cliff with a velocity of 10 meters per second. How far does it go? This is definitely a 2D problem, as the ball will be moving to the right horizontally, but will also be dropping down vertically until it hits the ground. Therefore, let's start by splitting up into our two dimensions, horizontal and vertical. Horizontally, we have v naught x. Well, the cannon is aiming straight horizontally, so the initial velocity is all horizontal. So our v naught x would be plus 10 meters per second. We'll consider right to be positive. How about acceleration in the horizontal direction? Well, we can note that there are no forces in the horizontal direction, so acceleration would have to be zero. Next, displacement, dx. Well, the displacement in the horizontal direction would represent how far from the base of the cliff the ball landed. At this point, we don't know this. If we think about it, it would depend on the initial velocity and how high the cliff is. Have you ever thrown a rock off the top of a cliff to see how far out it would go? Perhaps trying to see how far your splash might be in a lake or a river below? The higher the cliff, the more time the rock has in the air to travel out and away from the cliff. So we can't figure out dx without knowing more about the vertical situation. Thus, let's switch over to the vertical motion of our cannonball. Since we're shooting horizontally, there's no vertical component. So our v naught y is zero. The acceleration due to gravity would be minus 9.8 meters per second squared it's negative because we considered up to be positive. The displacement in the vertical direction would be minus 20 meters. Vertically, the ball ends up 20 meters below where it started. Again, the time is unknown and it's our only overlapping factor. We've now set up the problem and are ready for our kinematics equations. Since we know that the horizontal displacement is dependent on the cannonball's time in the air, let's start with a vertical and determine our time t. Referring to our kinematics equations and our list of knowns and unknowns, we can see that this would be a great equation to use. We have our v naught y and our acceleration in the vertical direction and we also have our displacement in the vertical direction, which leaves t as our only unknown in this equation. Perfect. In fact, we can notice that since the v naught y is zero, our equation gets really nicely simplified. And this is a fact worth noting. The math becomes much simpler if v naught y is zero. This happens for any case where the projectile begins with a strictly horizontal velocity. For this reason, some textbooks refer to these as type 1 projectile problems. That is, type 1 questions have a projectile that is shot horizontally. And this makes v naught y 0. And v naught y being 0, makes for much nicer equations during the solving stage at the end. So, back to our problem. Rearranging our simplified equation and substituting values, we can determine that the ball has an air time of 2 seconds. As soon as the cannonball touches the ground, it's no longer a projectile. If it hits water, it'll slow down and sink. If it hits a hard surface, it'll bounce. Who knows what's going to happen to the cannonball once it hits. But whatever happens, we can no longer consider it a projectile. 
back to horizontal. With a horizontal acceleration of zero, any of the equations we choose from will simplify down to d equals vt. We have to remember that this equation only flushes itself out with an acceleration of zero, and that'll be true in the horizontal direction here. So, we plug in our values and determine that the cannonball lands 20 meters away from the base of the cliff. In this tutorial, we solved a projectile problem. As is standard with projectile problems, we started by breaking down the object's motion into horizontal and vertical. The powerful idea which makes complicated 2D motion much easier to deal with. In this particular problem, we had an initial velocity which was horizontal. And we found that a horizontal velocity means that v naught y will be zero. And that means that the math work will work out nicely in the end. We also learned that air time is determined by considering the vertical motion. How long until the object touches the ground? Then, this same time can be used in the horizontal direction. 